Yeah, good day YouTubers. It's been a man with another uh, video here on uh, hand filing and uh, electric grinder. This is a very basic video for the beginners. Some uh, points to, uh, uh, to sort of take notice of and some things to do and don't do. First of all, this is a semi-chisel chain, meaning that the edge of the chain, this is the edge, this edge here, is rounded and has a radius. This top plate angle, you can see this black line going through here, is at a 30 degree angle. So we hold our file at this angle. We'll just zoom back out again. Two tools that you need. Uh, the bare minimum is a raker gauge. This is a raker gauge and this is to check the depth. I'll just turn it around there, you'll be able to see that. Point, 0 0.65 of a millimetre. So, what you might make sure that your raker doesn't protrude through here but we'll show you that later and it's got some degrees on there which you can check the angles of the teeth and this is to clean the bar out a lot of people say oh, I don't take the bar off well if you don't take the bar off it means you're not checking your saw you need to check your saw uh, it's good part of maintenance uh, but anyway we're not here for that we're here just to sort of go over about how to use a file Main thing is that when you use a file, that you hold it, you'll see these little X's that I've got on here. They're 30 degrees, uh, you know, one, one direction, 30 degrees in the other direction. So the main thing is that when you hold your file, if you've got an Oregon chain, they'll be 25 degrees. But most of the time I have steel chains, and most of the time, even if I've got an Oregon chain, I still grind at 30 degrees. All my chains are ground at 30 degrees. And... Uh, maybe a slight tilt down uh, Oregon recommend 10 degrees tilt but generally speaking you hold the file fairly flat so a lot of people make a mistake that when they file they push up or they push down or the other mistake they make that when they file they have a bit of a sweeping action whether it's this way or whether it's that way if you can't maintain the file at a dead straight angle you will find that the top of your tooth, and we'll just zoom in there, the top of your tooth will not be dead straight. It'll have a curve on it. So you must make sure that when you place your file in, that your file's not on this angle, not on this angle, not up or not down. The file must fit inside there nice and snug, parallel and these lines here as you can see you, you can see those black lines there so you hold the file as parallel as possible two hands so you keep your your finger and your thumb together and you push the file with a nice clean stroke take the file off and keep filing now what you want to end up doing is to remove all the metal a nice clean as you can see on this uh, tooth here it's nice and clean because all the metal was removed and what you want to achieve is that this top plate angle here is very sharp and the side plate which is around the side here is very sharp if you look at the the tooth next to it might give you a bit of a, a bit better of an idea so what we're trying to achieve is that this angle on top which is your 30 degree angle is razor sharp as it comes down the side here right down to the gullet it's razor sharp if you've got it like that you'll cut without any problem now the other thing is this is referred to as the gullet I'll just go back you might be able to, right down the bottom here is the gullet so as you keep filing away at your tooth and depends on how much you use your chainsaw you might find out uh, if you're only using it occasionally a few times a year maybe three four years down the track that your chain will be down to here as you file the metal away but as you slowly file this metal away this raker height the height of this raker has to be checked and filed now the way that you do that is you get this simple little gauge that we spoke about before, place it on top, and as you can see, it doesn't protrude up the top there. If it protruded, if it's stuck above here, you'd have to use this file 
and you'd have to file it. So what I would normally do, if it was protruding, I would just get the file, file once, two, put it back on and check. And if it protrudes, you'll, you'd, you'd feel it. So you only have to check the rakers probably oh, every five times that you sharpen your chain. Now, the difference between a brand new chain and by the time that the chain is sort of coming to the end of the life, the actual tooth is nearly 10 millimetres long, but there's a little witness mark. This, they, they refer to it as a witness mark, and we'll, we'll get a little uh, shot of that. You can see it right there, that little tiny black mark that black mark there so that means that this tooth from that point to that point there which is about nearly nine millimeters that's the life of the chain after that you throw it in the rubbish now the other thing you've got to be careful of if you're cutting timber with a blunt chain and you're putting a lot of pressure on the chainsaw you're going to wear the chain out it's going to stretch more the bars going to wear more it's going to heat up uh, the sprocket is going to wear more everything will wear more everything's harder on the saw if you're using chains that aren't razor sharp so it pays to keep your chains razor sharp uh, there is another tool uh, I really don't like using them but it's called a file guide and I'll just turn it around the other way it's got also marks on them 25 degrees 10 degrees 35 degrees and you place a file in inside there and you sit it on top of your tooth and it's supposed to help look I guess they're okay if you're a beginner uh, I personally don't use them another little tool that I, I use is called a bar cleaner it's just like a little bit of a parrot beak and you place that in the bar and you clean all the rubbish out so that's why I like to take off the bars I made another one this is another one here I like to take the bars off the chainsaw and uh, uh, clean them up another, another tool that we have uh, used for the bar is, is is a file you can clean up your bar with a file take the burrs off and keep them reasonably straight with a, a normal file this is a raker file but yeah you know, any type of file will work or you can buy this little unit here which the file sits in here, you sit it on your bar, so the file sits on top at 90 degrees to the side of the bar, and you bring it backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, and it will take off the high spots, and you turn it on the other side and you do the same. Then you flip your bar over and you do the same. So it's just a matter of making sure that uh, you keep your bar nice and parallel so that the chain's not lopsided uh, as what can happen if you neglect uh, not to do these things so the next thing we'll go on to is the electric grinder which is a favorite of mine because I really like uh, using the uh, electric grinders rather than use the file but it's only that if I've got a few chains to do I prefer to use the electric uh, grinder so this electric grinder is uh, uh, oh, a clone of a uh, Oregon grinder which is uh, probably one of the, the most popular out there in the industry it has quite a few adjustments on it at the back here you've got what we call uh, the head angle which roughly uh, most chains are set at 60 degrees so there's a bit of a graduation and a marker here and at the back there's a, a knob and you can adjust that to 60 degrees so that's virtually set and forget at the side here you've got a depth gauge this is to set how far the grinding wheel comes into the chain but we'll talk about that how to set that up properly when we get there and this is the degrees left and right which go from zero to 35 degrees uh, and this particular unit you can tilt the table 10 degrees this way or 10 degrees that way Oregon recommend 10 degrees tilt now the reason that you have zero degrees uh, 
you can leave this set at 60 degrees. I can change the wheel to a wheel that doesn't have a radius on it. It has a bit of a flat angle and you can set up and do your rakers uh, with a different wheel. So that's where I would use the zero. The other thing that you've got, you've got an adjustment here which pushes this unit uh, adjusts uh, how far the tooth comes in contact with the wheel. So that's your adjustment there. Then you've got this side adjustment so that when you're grinding on one side, you adjust this unit so that it pushes this metal tang over the other side so you don't grind it off. Uh, because if your chains get a bit short, you'll end up grinding this metal stop. So uh, we'll set that up anyway. So, okay, how do you set one of these up? A lot of people make a lot of mistakes. One of the other things that you need to make sure is that you can get a dressing uh, block and with this particular unit you have a bit of a uh, plastic gauge which has a nice radius on it and you make sure that you've got a nice beautiful round radius so with the dressing stone you start it up and you just keep this nice radius like a u-shape so that's pretty important uh, to maintain so we've set this at 60 degrees what we'll do now because this is a steel chain we'll set this at 30 degrees We'll lock it up in a position. So that's the head tilt angle at 60 degrees. The top plate angle set at 30 degrees. Now what we need to do is put the chain. Now this is very important. That This one it's on the far side. What we've got to do here is just adjust this and make sure that this is pushed all the way over. So that the grinding wheel doesn't come in contact with it and, and grind it it won't actually with a fairly new chain but as you get down to the witness mark right down right down here you'll have to make sure that you do that so what we need to do now is to bring this down we'll see if we can zoom in there and get a really good shot of this because this is really important how you set this up because if you don't take the time to set this up you may not get the result so you bring the grinding wheel down and it's just touching the tooth. You should be able to see that. There. You can see that. Now, we'll just lock that arm in the position and we'll check that again. Okay. That's just touching the tooth. That's the position that we want. So we can start to grind the chain in that position. If you... Don't do it that way, you might find out that uh, you grind too much. Now, the biggest mistake that everybody makes on grinding chains is they pull the handle down, or the grinding wheel, too fast. And two things that can happen, you can damage the stone and you can overheat the tooth. If you overheat the tooth, it becomes brittle and hard and you'll never file it. So. Normally, if you do it properly, if you put your finger on top after you've ground it, it should be just lukewarm. So we'll start the grinder. Okay, so now it's running. And we will proceed to sharpen this tooth. Now, before I do that, this I mentioned about the depth gauge, uh, setting the depth. Now, the way that that's done is that you bring the grinding wheel right down and when it sits into the bottom, when it touches the bottom, because if you if you look down, you'll be able to see where it touches the bottom of the chain, then you adjust the screw. So that's, that's how you set that up. So you don't want to uh, grind too deep. The, let's see if I can get a better shot. Let's try and show you the position, the maximum position. If you have a look, I'm just trying to grab a pointer. I do have an actual uh, depth gauge that I made. And the grinding wheel sits 8.2 millimetres above this, this rail. So this is the rail of the grinder. But if you have a look here at the bottom of the gullet and you look at these, these links here, you do not grind below these links. That is... That's because you're not going to cut 
your, your cutting edge is is here. So anything, if you grind below this point, you're not going to cut. It's just not going to cut. Uh, I'll give you a better idea of that is that when you look at this, the side plate of the tooth, you'll notice that the side of the tooth comes comes right out, and uh, you'll see it just there. So this protrudes out past there, so you can just see where the grinding wheel is touched on the bottom. This is right down that very corner, right there, as you go up, then you start to cut from this point all the way right there. So that's your cutting edge, that's your working edge right there. So if your grinding wheel is cutting down here, this part doesn't protrude out, which means it won't come in contact with the timber. So the maximum depth that you set your wheel to is right along that, where, where, where that comes right down the bottom, that angle, right at that point there where it intersects. So that's, that's your maximum depth that you set that at. And, and practice will uh, sort of sort of show you the way. So all right, just come back over this way. We'll set this up again. So we should be ready to grind this tooth. We'll just check again, rub that wheel, rotate that wheel backwards and forwards, and that's ready to go. So we'll turn the, the grinder on, and we'll grind that tooth. Nice and slow. Beautiful. It's nice and loose. Probably can have a possible, possibly have a little bit more on that. So, but that's always a good. As I said, that's a starting point. So we'll rotate the knob a little bit. We'll just try that again. Beautiful. So we'll go to the next one. Next one. Now that's not touching much that one, but that's okay. We'll have a look at the tooth later. I only prefer to take a little bit off at a time. Now, we'll just pretend that we've done the whole chain, so we're, all that side's been done. Now it's time to do the other side. So we turn the, the grinder off and undo the nut and bring this back to 30 degrees on this side. Now what we need to do is rotate this, this wheel back so that this piece of metal now sits over this side far away from the grinding wheel. Bring the grinding wheel down. It's just touching the tooth. It's probably could be backed off just a touch. We'll just back that off a touch and we'll check again. Yep. No, it just needs a little bit more forwards. So a little bit more forwards. Okay, so it just touches so we can start the grinder up. And we can start to grind this tooth here now. So same thing, just nice and gentle. You can always re-grind it if you're not happy with it. Just take your time. As you can see, I can put my finger on the tooth. So when people say overheating the tooth, that means that they're doing it too aggressively. So you would do, this is a 20 inch chain, so there's 18 teeth on the left hand side, there's 18 teeth on the right hand side. So that is how you use the grinder, nice and slow. Uh, just take your time and if you go too fast, yes, you will overheat. And generally speaking, most of my chains only need a grind just like that, just a touch. Uh, it's like when you sh sharpen a knife. 
if the knife has only got a bit of a, a dull edge, it doesn't need much off it. Now, I don't dull my chains to the point where they require a lot of grinding. They only need just a little bit. I prefer to use the grinder over the file because the grinder will duplicate the angle without error because once it's set up at 30 degrees here at 60 degrees here that can't change physically that cannot change so therefore every tooth will be ground at 30 degrees on the top plate angle and that head angle that comes in at 60 degrees it'll be ground at that and we're sitting the table is sitting a dead zero it's not tilted this way or it's not tilted that way so these are all the mistakes that you can make with a file I've got nothing against a file yeah I use files all the time myself but if if there's going to be a race between a file and a grinder I'm 99% sure that the grinder is going to win now there's going to be others that will disagree with me but I would say this to those people that when you buy your chain that comes out of the factory, is it hand filed or is it ground by a grinder? No, it's ground by a grinder. And it is dead accurate. Every tooth is identical. Nobody goes into a shop and buys a brand new chain and it states on the packet, this was hand filed. No, it's, yeah. So, yeah, my argument to the hand filers are, as hand filing is old school it's great for out in the field if you don't have a grinder but I do have a battery grinder anyway so I will use a hand file there the only thing that I would say about a hand file is if you want to clean the gullet out and that means get right in there so as you're grinding the tooth as, as this tooth gets ground and ground after many uses you might find out that down the bottom where the gullet is, is is a little bit uneven it's up and down a little bit and you might want to get the file and clean that up a bit but if you're using the grinder and you're setting it up at the same height and I've got a gauge it sits on here 8.2 millimeters and that's the height of the bottom of the grinding wheel to the bottom of the bar that's my height that means that using a 3.8 chain which is what this is so if I'm using a 3.8 chain, it's 8.2 millimetres. That means that as I grind this tooth away, that line will be nice and straight, so I won't have to clean the gullet out. But if I'm using a hand file sometimes, you have to make sure that you clean that gullet and keep it nice and straight. The other thing where a lot of people make mistakes with a hand file is they might be... You, you need to make sure that your, your hand file is coming up to this edge. So if you're pushing the file through, it needs to sharpen the side plate and the top plate simultaneously. You need to be removing all that metal simultaneously. And this is what the grinder does. The grinder removes the metal provided that if this chain was previously ground on another grinder and the head angle was set up, say, at 55 degrees and this was set up at 25 degrees or 35 degrees, that means that you're going to have to grind off excess metal before you get the profile uniform so that all metal is removed simultaneously. Because if you change this angle here, say, to 25, you're going to find out that the, that the wheel is going to come, come in contact with the tooth at a different angle until you've ground that metal away till it's uniform again same as if you go to 35 degrees if you go to 35 degrees you'll find out that the wheel's going to come in contact with the back of the tooth first before it comes in contact with the front of the tooth so that means you've got to grind this metal away and it's the same thing if you was to grind 15 degrees you're going to have to grind all the front of this metal away before it's uniform so bear in mind if you're using different grinders uh, and, and that's why I like to bring the wheel down if I'm not sure if I wasn't sure of the angle of the tooth all as I would do was loosen the table bring the grinding wheel down and look at the gap the gap of the tooth 
that angle lines up with the wheel. So in this case here, as you can see, if you zoom in, it lines up. We'll see if we can get a, uh, a shot of that. So I think you can maybe just see that. We'll just see if you can. There it is there. If I rock that backwards and forwards, if I rock it this way, you'll see the gap at the front. If I rock it that way, so it's just a matter of bringing the wheel down like that and looking at the gap and making sure to say okay and then you look then you look down on your on your marker you might go oh look that's that needs to that's that was set close enough to 30 degrees if it was at 25 degrees which would be an Oregon chain then you would leave it on 25 degrees so make sure that if you're using a grinder that you take the time to set it up if you don't take the time to set it up and you're grinding excess metal off it means that your chain won't last as long because you didn't take the time and effort to check things out so as i said earlier i only grind the bare minimum of metal off my teeth i barely take any off them unless they're damaged or if they're but i don't really blunt uh, my chains normally when I go out to chop firewood and that's all I mainly cut is firewood I'll take about three chains and the chain roughly lasts about oh, up to an hour depends on how hard the timber is uh, we've got fairly hard wood uh, here in Australia so our eucalypts can be very hard and I don't like cutting any timber as soon as the chain starts to dull because it just means it takes more effort and I'd prefer to have a razor sharp chain and I, and as I'm cutting sometimes I look between uh, my legs where all the chips are coming off the saw and just looking at the chips to make sure that, that they're coming out chips and not sawdust. The moment that it goes from chips to sawdust is when you need to well, before that, that's when you need to change your chain. So normally it's a good idea that roughly when I'm uh, sawing using the chainsaw, a tank full of uh, fuel would probably last about 40 to 50 minutes. So when I've got to refuel with oil and uh, fuel, then I'll probably pull out the hand file and give the chain three four strokes each tooth just a little bit of a lick uh, just to make sure that it's uh, nice and uh, sharp again and that's usually all I need to do uh, if I feel that I've blunted it a little bit I'll inspect it look at the edges and everything oh I think I'll change that one then when I get home I might have three four chains and uh, I don't doesn't mean I'm going to sharpen them that day I might wait I think I've got about a total of about 15 chains. So when I get about half a dozen sitting there, I'm not going to file them with a file. I'll just get the uh, grinder out and do it with a grinder. Uh, but just remember, take the time to set this up. Just take the time and bring this grinding wheel down nice and slow. And uh, you won't burn the teeth. As you saw before, I could touch it. It's only people who don't take the time to set it up and they bring this down too fast or they're grinding way too much off. Now, the other thing, and I've done it before with a vernier caliper, is when I do uh, sharpen a chain, if I was to measure the tooth with a vernier caliper, in most situations I'm only taking between 0.1 of a mil and 0.2 of a millimetre off the tooth. That's all I'm taking off. So between point 0.1 and point 0.2. Normally I'll look at the chain and if it looks like it's a little bit dull, I'll go, oh, I might take a little bit more. So I'll make sure that when I bring this down, that it bites into the, like that, it's probably about point 0.1 of a mil. It's, it's touching the tooth, but it spins fairly easily. If I was to adjust, adjust this a little bit more, I'd have to rotate this a little bit harder. There'd be much more resistance there, and that'd be more like a 0.2 mil of a, uh, a cut. So, look, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, yeah, uh, so until the next one, uh, yeah, span a man out.